Well, hello, what is more spring and Easter than carrots? And what is a great way to have carrots? In cake. Carrot cake is just that like delicious cake because it has some warm spices in it. It has those carrots, which no, you don't really taste the carrot. You see them, but mostly they impart so much wonderful moisture into the cake. And so it is this always soft and moist cake that I feel like people just love. Even if you don't think you love, you know, a vegetable and a dessert, you love carrot cake. And we are gonna make a great one. So if you're gonna have an Easter celebration, a spring celebration, whatever you're gonna have, this cake is the perfect thing to make it feel more springy. So to start, we're gonna put our sugars into the mixer. So I have a little bit of brown sugar. Brown sugar obviously has some molasses in it. And what that does is it imparts some great flavor. And I like to incorporate it. You know, if you add too much, it can be too wet. But when you add just a little bit, it imparts just a little bit of that. And oh, that's so good. So with the sugar, we're gonna add our eggs. So we're gonna mix the eggs and the sugar. I, you know, it's kind of like you're incorporating them and making them a little bit more fluffy. You're incorporating some air into them. There's really not, it's just like a great way to mix all those things together. And I just love how it works. So this is a little bit different than some of the other traditional cakes. A lot of times we're used to a cake being what? Butter and sugar, you aerate that, you mix that up. Instead, this is an oil-based cake. Which, you know, a lot of people would maybe knock for flavor because it doesn't have the butter in it, but oil-based cakes are the most moist cake. And a lot of times when there's a lot of spices and things in them, you're gonna have more of an oil-based cake because you don't need the butter to carry the flavor. So we're gonna put the oil in, and I just use a neutral flavored oil. I don't necessarily like a salad oil or a vegetable oil, but I like to use a safflower oil a lot of times, just something that doesn't have flavor. So I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna start mixing it up and we're gonna move on. So after a few minutes, it doesn't really get light and fluffy as it would with butter because we're mixing liquids with the oil, but it does get a little bit lighter and it's well mixed. So I'm gonna add some vanilla. You need the vanilla. It really balances out the other flavors. You know, we have a lot of interesting flavors in this and that's what's fun about this delicious cake. So next we're gonna start adding flour, the dry ingredients. What I love about this is I think it kind of, there's, there's types of like an adult cake in this, almost of like an old school cake with those warm spices, but then usually kids are gonna like this one too. And I think that's what's great about this. You're gonna get kind of that mix of all the different flavors in there and kind of like hit, kind of like everyone's palate it seems like. And that's what I kind of love about this. And as I'm always filling my flour, I make sure, instead of sifting it, a lot of times we'll just take it and lightly fill up whatever cup I'm doing so it kind of doesn't get packed in there. And then you just want to swipe it off. And then that way you're not packing it in and then putting too much flour in when you do that. So with the flour, the rest of the dry ingredients are gonna be some baking powder. You need it for that wonderful lift. You're gonna do the baking powder in here and then we're gonna do some baking soda. And we're gonna add a little bit of that. And you know, just this is really kind of the simple, normal ingredients, kind of like the players that go into any good cake. So now we're gonna add some of my favorites. So, some cinnamon. I think with cinnamon, what I love is obviously you get those warm kind of tones, but this, when it's mixed with the carrots, and I'm gonna be honest, I am someone, like if you look back at my recipes, I love to put cinnamon on roasted carrots. I think there is something about that play. The sweetness of the carrots really carries the cinnamon and makes, it just does something special to it that I just love. So then we're gonna put in a little bit of nutmeg and I always freshly grind my nutmeg just because nutmeg can go rancid or it can lose its flavor pretty quickly. That when you can just do it fresh right in there, you're gonna get a good hit of those essential oils. You just instantly get it. And I'm not putting too much in because it does overpower. So I'm gonna start slowly mixing this just until the flour is worked in. That flour is mixed in there. We're gonna do the rest of it by hand. So I'm gonna take this off, clean that beater off. And yes, you know, you know the time it would take and that you would waste if you were trying to do this with a spatula. Let's just be honest, we need to make this just normal that we use our fingers on the beaters, even if it's on a video, on TV, whatever it is. 
it's okay. Cause I don't know how else you're gonna clean that beater and get all that stuff off. Cause I am not gonna waste it. I'm not gonna do that. So now we get the point of the cake. So when I'm gonna grate a lot of carrots, I'm gonna use my food processor with the attachment that's gonna grate them. Because you know what? Otherwise we are gonna sit there forever. I have a few more to grate. So you kind of have to check and just start measuring and seeing. You sometimes get a few big piece on top, but it is so much easier to grate your carrots this way, or it just is a time saver. So I'm gonna start measuring off my carrots. You know, what I make sure to do, instead of just necessarily peeling them all, I scrub them really well if they're organic carrots. I make sure that they're a good quality. And if I scrub them well and they don't have bad abrasions on them, then I don't worry about having to peel them. Because for one, can you tell right now if they're peeled? No, nor can anyone else. So I'm putting these carrots and I'm putting them kind of like lightly packing, not smashing them in, but I wanna make sure I have, what? A lot of carrots in here. This is a carrot cake. We're gonna get them in there. We're gonna make sure. So finally, I'm gonna add some toasted and chopped pecans. Now, anytime I'm gonna add a nut to something, I wanna make sure to toast it beforehand because you get a lot more flavor out of it. And also, if you just put nuts into a batter like this and then bake it, you're really going to get kind of a soggy outcome that really has no flavor. And I do not like that soggy texture when the cake is done. Instead, I want them to be completely toasted and well flavored. And then to me, there's an actual point to them as opposed to just kind of like in the background with no point. So I'm just mixing that in by hand just because I don't want to overmix it. If you overmix the batter, it could get a little bit drier. The texture isn't as good. So I'm going to clean up and we're going to put this into the pan and we're going to bake a cake. It's so simple. So I have two nine inch cake pans and I did spray them and then I did put some parchment in the bottom. You know, this is a moist cake just for ad insurance. Actually, when I make any cake, I like to put the parchment in the bottom and I go one step further and I usually just buy the pre-cut parchment because you know, you could fold it and fold it and fold it and fold it and then make a little cut and try to make it round. You could also just buy the pre-cuts. I don't make cakes like every day, so it's okay. So we're gonna divide this batter in between the two. If you wanna be precise, weigh it. If you want to wing it, like me, just eyeball it. That's, that's the way, you know? We're not gonna sell this, so it's okay just to make it homey and just make it work. And what I love is, as you're pouring this out, you are seeing it is chocked full of delicious carrots. It is, has like an ample amount of those toasted pecans in it, which I like. I don't like when there's something that is in there and you just hardly find it or notice it. I like it to really be seen, I like it to be noticed and I want everyone when they take a bite to have it because that's the point. You want all that good ingredients in there, which is why I'm always scraping out my bowls. <coughs> so I'm gonna spread this out. You want them to be an even layer. And when you have that parchment in the bottom, you just wanna make sure it's not pushing the parchment either. Cause sometimes it does and it wants to a little bit. I'm gonna just kind of, what I do is I kind of eyeball how much it comes up the side of the, pan and like this one to me just feels like it has a little bit too much so i'm gonna take it and put it over here i know you know that way we just don't have to go to the kitchen scale it's what we do sometimes i'm gonna make sure to get all that off and look they look beautiful we're gonna pop them into the oven it's preheated preheating is important because then your oven is at the correct temperature and not kind of still fluctuating around we're gonna bake them and then we're gonna let them cool because you can't frost a cake that isn't cool. But don't worry, we'll make frosting too. The cakes have baked and you can see they get beautiful golden tops, that beautiful kind of crust like on them. And now I always, just to make sure what I always do is I just take a skewer and just always insert it into the middle. If it comes out clean or it's just a few crumbs, you're good. Now I'm gonna let them cool. I'm gonna let them cool for probably about 10 minutes at least in the pan turn them out because they're still soft. And so if you turn them out right away, they could break, crack. So I like to let them cool and set a little bit more in the pan, then turn them out and let them cool completely. But while they're cooling, I'm going to make my frosting. I like to pre-make it because I sometimes like to chill it. Cream cheese frosting, 
cream cheese frosting, right? It's what is traditional with a carrot cake. It's delicious, and I think sometimes it can be a little soft. So I always like to make it and then chill it a little bit so it's easier to frost. And guess what we're starting with? Cream cheese. Now, I set the cream cheese and the butter out at room temperature for, you know, I like to do it either overnight for quite a few hours until you want it to be at room temperature because otherwise the thing is, it will not get that nice, light, fluffy texture you want. So I even start by creaming my cream cheese and then we're gonna add the butter. That just begins getting the cream cheese a little bit more easier to work in with the butter. It gets a little bit softer. And so I'm just gonna scrape it down just to make sure we're evenly incorporating as we're going here. And I'm gonna add the butter. The butter too, I let go to room temperature. You know, if it isn't, you're really gonna get those clumps. You're gonna make it so it just doesn't wanna work in as easy. I might just kind of see, this is how you can tell when it is well softened. See how it kind of wants to just bend at first and then tear? If it just breaks in half, you can kind of see that there's nice give to it. It gives and it's just really soft. That's well softened butter. If it's cold, it's just gonna break. I'm gonna whip that up and make sure it's well incorporated. Intermittently, I do like to scrape it and just make sure, you know, you don't want to just have a start where you're getting some of those clumps in there. So if every so often you're gonna mix it for a while just to ensure that it's all at the same temperature, it's all getting mixed. So with this mix, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of sour cream. Now, it's not necessarily normal to put this into your cream cheese frosting, but just think of it kind of like a cheesecake. A lot of times a cheesecake is gonna have some sour cream in it because it kind of balances out those flavors instead of necessarily just adding milk or a lot more liquid to this, which I don't like to do because it usually becomes too soft. This adds that it kind of complements the tang of the cream cheese without being too much, and it just kind of works together. So I'm gonna mix that into before we add the sugar and the vanilla. So it's well mixed in. I'm gonna one more time just scrape the sides down before we add our sugar and vanilla. And you know, you can even check the paddle, sometimes higher up on it. Some of that cream cheese gets lodged on there. You're just making sure because if you don't get it all mixed in the beginning, you'll get those clumps. To me, they're the bane of a cream cheese or really any frosting. You know, a lot of times for cakes, I like a Swiss buttercream frosting. So I like that you kind of first take the egg whites with sugar and you get it all worked together and then you make it into this marshmallow type fluff and add the butter. But this is different. This is more of an American style frosting. So we're really just adding now powdered sugar and vanilla. So I'm gonna add my vanilla right in there just so I don't forget, because I do that. That's just gonna help kind of flavor it a little bit more. And now the powdered sugar, I admit. A lot of times I like to cut corners and just add it straight away, but then I'm always gonna get some of those powdered sugar clumps. So I'm really gonna try this time not to. And I am gonna actually sift it, which I don't love to do, but you know what? You just kind of have to because that's what can ensure you're not gonna get those. So I'm doing it right on parchment paper. I'm just taking my sifter making sure I work it through. Just, you know, if you're going to all this work, if you're making a cake for an occasion, if you're having maybe an Easter celebration, whatever it is, you might as well have it look good. If you're going to this work already, let's sift the powdered sugar. We all know we've had those times we don't, and then we try to work out right now what is in the bottom of my sifter. Look at those pieces. Those are what, as you're mixing, they don't always mix in, and instead, you'll get those pieces. Now you can work them through, you can make it work. So. We're gonna add some powdered sugar. Now, this is why I do it on parchment, so I can kind of do it cleanly. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's pretty clean. We're gonna add that in there, and then we're just gonna start mixing it low and slow, because guess what? It's gonna go everywhere if we don't. Low and slow. Otherwise, it's a cloud. So you can see we have a nice, smooth, creamy frosting, and it's just exactly that consistency you want. And now you may need to scrape it and do it again if you still have a few pieces. I'm gonna actually just, you know, you don't want it to get hard in the refrigerator, but I am gonna chill it probably for around 15, 20 minutes before I wanna frost the cake, just so it sets up a little bit. I think it makes it easier. You can see that these have now pulled slightly from the edges. Usually it's a sign that it would be ready to take and flip out, and oh yeah. This is why we do parchment. Look at that, super easy. 
It's to me the best way because then it just ensures that you don't have to worry about it. And that's what I love. So I'm gonna let these cool completely down to room temperature, if not slightly on the cool side if I can. Then we'll just put it together and we are gonna have a delicious cake that I can eat all of. I mean, not all of it once, but you know what I mean. Isn't this the best part? I know you're excited too. We have our frosting. It's slightly chilled, which means look, it is still very like spreadable, very viscous. It just, it sets up just a little bit, which makes it easier. We have our cakes. They have been cooled completely. I mean, look how beautiful this cake is. So I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna do this, you know, with the parchment. You know, if you just wanna keep it a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, it does. It just makes a difference. And you can kind of just set it right there then on them and you have this little collar around them to keep your plate a little bit cleaner. It does, it just makes a difference. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the dome off. You don't have to, but it, it makes it easier. And like I said, when it's an occasion or when you're, I mean, if you're making a layer cake, it's an occasion, even if it isn't, because it's just something special. So I just keep turning it, cutting it. Usually as you turn it, if you can kind of slowly work your knife through, it just makes it be a little bit more even. Oh, look at that. I mean, if that doesn't look good, I don't know what does. I love to see the flex. I love to see, mm, I know I popped, I popped a pecan in my mouth. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that on camera, I can't. Mm, okay, it's my kitchen, I can do it. So it just makes it a little bit more flat, you know. So we're gonna put some of the frosting. I mean, just, oh, who does not love frosting like that? Okay, so some of this cream cheese frosting, we're gonna put a good amount here right in the middle. Not like a ton, because like I said, cream cheese frosting is kind of soft and so it can kind of want to run out sometimes. So we're gonna spread it out. Not too much in the middle. I think you kind of want like a nice layer. Guys, you know who joined us? Mm-hmm, Kip. He knows, he knows the moment I do anything, don't you? That involves sugar or food or anything and he would like to, he would like to partake. So once I have that layer in there, now, if you wanna be really picky, you can, you can take a little bit of the dome off here. You could also turn it upside down and get that in there. I, this is a rustic cake. This is a homemade cake. I'm not trying to be a bakery. That's why we have bakeries. So I'm gonna put this right on top because I don't mind if you get a little bit of that dome shape on top. I'm pressing it just to make sure it actually really kind of sticks and is solid. And then guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna put more frosting on it. This is, the part that, yeah, sure, it takes a little bit of time, but I think what you need to remember is people want a cake that you make to look homemade in the sense that then it looks good. You know those grocery store cakes? You know the ones that you just go, and yeah, they look pretty, but they're just like too perfect and too kind of weird and almost dated looking. You know, this is a cake that people are gonna know you took the time to actually spread that frosting around. So what I'm doing is I'm first working it to the edges, as you can see and letting it just wanna start falling off. And then I just start pushing it around, making sure to kind of get in that, that crack between the layers. Oh, this just looks, it does, it looks good already. So I'm gonna keep spreading. I'm gonna keep working it around, adding more if I need to and working it down the sides. It's just a little bit easier than trying to take a dollop and spread it on the side. This is a little bit more natural way to make it kind of spread evenly. You could do a crumb coat and try to make short, but you know what? Since we didn't do a lot of cuts, there's not a lot of crumbs right now, so we are just gonna make this work. We're gonna spread this around, and then yeah, I'll cut a piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat a piece. So, you know, you could kind of keep going forever. You know, you, when you get into this, you're like, oh wait, I wanna just be done. Just enjoy it. And you know what? I like the swirls, so I make kind of swirls on it, because to me it's like, that way you don't, aren't trying to make it look just like this perfect smooth cake. You got the, you got the textures to it. It's like a wave, it's natural, it's beautiful. And remember, it's homemade, it's from the heart. That to me, it's the point. So, we did these because look. Yes, that is, <laughs> this is what you want. Take some of that work out of it. You don't have to worry about it. You can lick these off in secret. That is your prerogative. And there you go. It's a, it's a pretty cake. So I'm going to cut this. Now, if you were gonna make this ahead, it would not be a bad idea to fully chill the thing. It's gonna hold better and cut easier. 
and then let it come down to just a little bit at room temperature so you get, you know, because things taste better when they're more at room temperature. We're gonna cut a nice piece. Look at that, oh. There's just something special about a layer cake. And honestly, did you see how easy that was? That layer cake was easy. Look at that. Perfect. Every time. And I put on my favorite jadeite. You guys know, I collect restaurant wear. I love it. It just looks prettier on it. You knew I was gonna try it. <laughs> I had to. I love right away the crumb you see. You see the nuts, the texture is great. It is moist. Mmm. Mmm. You guys can let yourself out. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep eating. This is great. It's exactly what you want in a carrot cake. It actually, to me, with the amount of carrot I put in it, which I upped the carrot, imparts just a slight sweet carrot flavor, which I love, which goes perfectly well with those toasted pecans. A Little bit of cinnamon, but not too much. A Little bit of nutmeg that you don't hardly notice, but it brings out the other flavors. You get that nice ribbon of cream cheese frosting in the middle. You get the cream cheese on the outside. Guys, this is good. And I know you're gonna like it too. So as always, I hope you guys share these around because food is for sharing. And you guys share these videos, yes, it helps me, but it helps everyone else see how fun this is, how easy this is. Make an occasion at home, you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. You can make a cake for a party, for Easter, for spring, for a birthday, for a loved one, for yourself. We all need that, self-care. So please do, share it around. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe. So many other recipes and tips and tricks and outdoor information, garden related, it's all there. And until next time, I'm gonna keep eating cake. I think you can too. Can't wait to see yours. <laughs>